I have to say, I am in total, total disbelief. Where were these things like 13 years ago when I just started painting and everything looked like crap? scientific minds we have today. Margaret Colbert, Speed Recovery Finish Network. All right, we are back with the Acura that we painted about two weeks ago, a week ago. Everything is dried up nice. I mean, it looks pretty presentable. Um, you know, you can definitely tell this is like a, a DIY paint job. You know, it's got dust nibs in it. It's got... Um, a little bit of inconsistency in the finish as far as orange peel and the clear coat and that and that could be the clear coat could be the base coat because i was losing pressure on both the base coat and the clear coat trying to let it fill up and then spray 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 until i run out of pressure so i got uh, this is a subscriber request i've never used one of these i'm not opposed to new things you know even though i've been in this trade for a long time um, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, this is the correct way to do it, and uh, you know you're doing it wrong, and I don't use that crap, and this and that. I, even though I am a little bit old school, I do try and be open to new stuff. This is at least new to me. I'm sure it's not new, but it's new to me. The denim pad. Okay, so supposedly this is supposed to remove orange peel without sanding. And you guys all know the golden rule for my little you know beep bop beater car paint jobs. Okay, stand a couple feet away. Looks great. Now let's get up close. Let me really show you guys what it looks like after it's cured. So if we come to the center of the hood where I probably put the most material, it looks pretty glossy, pretty flat. Now let's pull it back. Now I want you to look at the LED right here. Okay. I want you to look at that. And what is that? That is orange peel. Come on back here to the back part of the hood. Okay. Where, let's see if I can get it just right. Yep. Orange peel right there. Okay, this has got two coats of clear on it with a medium solids glamour clear It's got a little bit of build to it, but we're not going to push it too crazy You know two coats of clear is not enough clear coat to wet sand and buff I just want to be clear with those of you watching because you got to remember you're going to wet sand and buff off about 30% of that material so you need to have a, lim a minimum of two coats worth of material left on the car before you You know you kick it on down the road out into the Sun anyways Let's get this thing taped up and wiped down a little bit. We're going to start buffing. So I went ahead and taped off the driver's side versus passenger side. Just so that when we're buffing, it's going to give us a very distinctive, clear difference between the two sides and what, you know, this pad is going to do. So before we start buffing, we're going to go ahead and clean the surface with a little bit of glass cleaner. One of the most crucial steps when it comes to buffing is making sure that you have a clean surface. If you're working on a used car, you know, clay bar it. Um, clean the living heck out of that paint before you start buffing because if not you're just going to be buffing dirt nibs and stuff like that into the surface and it's actually going to scratch the paint and <laughs> it, sometimes it can actually look worse uh, than before you even started buffing. As far as this denim pad I mean it's a little bit of a learning curve because it's not like your typical foam pad that you know it likes to kind of soak up the uh, you know the compound and the polishes and it's a little bit jumpy on low speeds but once you kind of get that compound worked in um, and you get a nice you know slick layer of that compound you can speed up the buffer a little bit and start moving a little bit quicker you don't want to stay in one spot too long that's one thing I'll tell you guys when it comes to very aggressive cutting pads never stay in one spot too long keep moving that pad keep moving it keep moving it across the surface um, you don't want to heat up that paint to the point where you warp or burn through the paint. That's not going to be good. I separated, you know, I'm doing it in sections. I did the front section of the hood. Now we're moving into the um, rear section of the hood. Same thing. Working that compound in a little bit on a slower speed and just kind of working it in. And then we're going to speed it up a little bit. As you guys can see here, I'm bumping my speed up. 
and now we're going to really start cutting down that surface. I really had to focus on that back corner of the hood because it actually had kind of excessive orange peel. So we really cut that thing down. And I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys, as I was working on that back corner of the hood, I could literally see the orange peel going away as I was working at it. Like it was, it was pretty impressive. It's really not hard to work these things, you know, especially the buffer. It does not take a detailing certification. I know they have uh, these crazy de detailing certifications now where you're a certified buffer and a certified ceramic coater and all this other stuff. It, guys, it, it does not take a rocket scientist to do this type of stuff. I've been running a buffer since I worked in a body shop at a young age at, you know, 20 something years old. I was 21 or 20 at the time. You know, it doesn't take long to kind of figure it out. If, if you have a brain and you have two eyes and you just look at what you're doing, you know, you can really kind of figure it out. And of course, you're going to learn stuff along the way. So now I'm pretty good with where it's at. Um, I got a pretty good cut on the paint. I'm looking at it pretty good, right? I'm looking at the back of that part of that hood. And now we're just going to go ahead and wipe down the surface and we're going to prepare it for our final polish. Now understand this denim pad is a very heavy cut pad. It's very abrasive. So you will 100% have to follow it up with some type of a polish and a polishing pad. So we're going to go ahead, put a nice little slick layer of this polish on. We're going to go ahead, take our Mark 1 Refinished Products black pad and start working this polish into the surface. We're using my brand of buffing pads. This is the Mark 1 Refinished Products Shine Pack, which includes two of the red pads, which are a medium cut, two of the green pads and two of the black pads, which you guys are seeing right here. One thing I really like about these black pads, they are extremely soft and they like to go around curvatures pretty nice. So it goes around curves and edges and stuff like that. And it just puts a really, really good polish on the surface in very little time. I find between the Speedo Coat um, polishes and compounds and stuff like that, and the Mark One refinished products, I've really dialed in my um, paint correction and ceramic coating stuff. I've really dialed it in in the last year to the point where, I mean, I'd be comfortable doing a Ferrari if it rolled into my shop tomorrow. Um, part of being good at what you do is really just practicing with what you have. I ordered these pads, you know, probably about maybe like a year and a half ago, two years ago as a prototype and just started playing with them and seeing how they worked and they work so well. I was like, man, let's put these out there and let's, you know, get these in some other people's hands because these things are really nice. I've had a lot of local detailers um, stop in and use them and have had zero complaints with them. And I'm talking people that detail, you know, at least five cars a week and they do really really well and they perform very well when it comes to your final polish this is the one step you could really kind of speed it up really fast you want to use a fast speed with your polish because it doesn't generate that much heat or friction and then a lower speed um, with your high cut high cut pads and your high cut compounds but this is kind of a really delicate process the finishing polish you know, it's it's very easy. It's probably the easiest step to do. Right now, we're just wiping it off, checking out our work, and um, I gotta say, I was I was really really happy. And honestly, I wish if I would have kept the car, um, I would have done the whole car. But this was just a demonstration, so but it came out good. I have to say, I am in total total disbelief. Where were these things like 13 years ago when I just started painting and everything looked like crap? <laughs> or no, I actually, I, I could actually probably argue 20 years because I've been spray painting stuff in my garage since I've been a teenager. I mean, man, the difference. Like, I'm not going to say this looks wet sanded and buff because it doesn't. And it could be because this is just a demonstration. I didn't really work hard at this. I did one pass on the lower part of the hood one pass on the top part of the hood and like you know i was like okay let's just polish it up see what it looks like but wow what a difference let's look at this look first of all let me peel this tape okay all right so let's look at the difference let's see if i can that's a little dirty okay look in here 
And let's look over here. Big difference. Now let's get back even farther. Look at this LED and look at this LED. Wow. This side is more of like the, hey, this guy did like a DIY spray job. Still looks good. Look, like I said, still looks good, arguably. I, nobody's going to say for a DIY job with a six gallon air compressor with, you know, cheaper $120 gallon clear coat. Nobody's going to say this looks bad. And if you do, you're, you're just overcritical. Just go, go, you know, to the top of the cliff and sing a song to yourself or something like, <laughs> but like, you know, like this is, this is like DIY. Hey, he did a half decent job and a decent job. And this is like, okay, this could look like a, a factory texture, orange peel type job. Like, look at, look at this in here. Like that's like a, that's like a factory texture or close to it, in my opinion. Let's go back to this spot back here on the back part of the hood. This little corner part that was real nasty, that had, that actually had really excessive orange peel. Let's look at this. Look at that. Look at that LED in that in that light. Look at, Now look, there's still a little bit of texture right here. You see, you guys see that right on the lip? Because I wasn't trying to burn through that lip. But look at that. That is like actually perfectly flat that looks wet sanded and buffed and that's because i worked the hardest on that corner right there so maybe if i just did that on the whole half that i just buffed here it probably would look like that but this is actually pretty incredible the difference and i'm trying to focus on the leds because the light you can't really tell with the light it kind of distorts it let's get back onto these leds so there's this let's go to the middle part of the hood there's that side, and there's this side. Looky here. This is the so this is the middle, right, right in the middle. Okay. There's that side. Let's go over here, and there's this side. A lot less. I am not going to say that this is the equivalent of wet sanding and buffing because it is not. Does it remove orange peel? Yes. Will it remove 100% of orange peel? No. Um, will it remove like 70 to 80% of orange peel? Yes. Um, is wet sanding and buffing the traditional method always going to be best? Yes. Uh, is this a great alternative to wet sanding and buffing for like a cheap used car or like a cheap little beep bop paint job like what we got here? Absolutely. And I will be doing this in the future again. This was like super fun. I mean, this is incredible. I don't even think an old school wool pad rotary buffer could actually take out as much orange peel as this random orbital, which random orbitals, everybody knows in the buffing, all the buffing nerds and buffing experts. No, the random orbital does not even cut. Like it's not made for cut. It's just made for like polish and swirls and light scratches. A, ran, a, a rotary, which is, dude, that thing will cut your head off. <laughs> it, it'll cut some paint, you know what I mean? And you'll, you'll burn right through that clear if you ain't careful with it. You guys have seen me do it. A rotary with a wool pad with cutting compound could not have taken out as much orange peel as we took out in just five quick minutes with this tool. This is very incredible. So if you guys are looking for a quick, easy solution to get your car buffed out, after you know you do a diy paint job like what you did like what i did in the, the last video with the six gallon air compressor hey with a 90 dollar buffer from harbor freight and some 13 dollar pads denim pads off of amazon and some uh i don't know 20 dollar 30 dollar um compound from speedo coat you can actually buff your paint job out you know maybe put an additional coat of clear on it maybe three coats clear instead of two coats like I did. You can buff this thing out, man. You can you can get it kind of flat. But hey, I just wanted to show you guys this. This was a specifically a subscriber request. Somebody requested it. Um I think it was like it was like 2 weeks ago. And literally as soon as he requested, I looked up on Amazon 13 bucks up, bought it. Didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, bought it 13 bucks. It'll make a great video for you guys. Um, so yeah, that wraps it up for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it educational. If you guys are looking for the best and most affordable auto body products in the world, including Speedoco detail products, head on over to www.speedoco.com. They have everything you guys need to get your projects done. Like and subscribe. New videos every week.